What a good day. Steak day. Oh, it's good. This is why it's the best method. Just look at that. Look at that. Don't try this at home. There's all sorts of theories on how to cook steak all over the interweb. Do you sear it first? Or there's all these new methods of the reverse sear. There's cooking in sous vide. So we're gonna take some of these steaks and do some experiments and see what really works and what's maybe just uh... So the first method we're gonna do is sear on both sides and throw into an oven to finish. I wanna show how I would season a steak. It might look a little aggressive, but trust me, salt is a magic ingredient, don't be scared. You wanna hold it high and you want it to look kinda of like that. Do the fat also. I don't really like just seasoning it and throwing it right in the pan. The salt has to take a little bit of time to do its thing. This has been under five minutes and it's pulling water to the surface already. And before you put this in the pan, you wanna block that. You do not wanna just throw a wet steak into hot oil. It's gonna splatter, it's gonna make it harder to get that caramelization and that crust on the steak. And that's what you're looking for. I'm gonna give it some pepper. So you want your pan pretty much screaming hot. A little pressure in the center because it wants to bubble in the middle from all the heat. Flip this over. So that's a pretty good sear on it already. We also want to get this fat cap right here. I'm going to put this in the oven. Whew. I think that steak, uh, because it, it came to temp like it should on the counter and it wasn't cold all the way through, it should only need uh, just a couple minutes in there, maybe two minutes. All right. All right, so now we want to rest this. I have a clean pan here. You know, we have really good color on the meat, so this should rest for, I'd say, seven minutes or so. You can see all the juices trying to escape right now. Imagine if you cut into it. Is it time? Have we waited long enough? Don't cut it too thin either. I know it seems like fancy, but if you cut it really thin, it's just gonna dry out. We did a good job because if we didn't rest, there would be so much more juice spilling all over this cutting board. This is kind of, you know, your standard classic method of cooking a steak. When you do it this way, you definitely get this like gray line from the hard sear. We might be able to avoid that with the reverse sear, we'll find out but this looks pretty good to me. Oh, that is good. All right, reverse sear. So I'm gonna season this again. This method right here kind of completely debunks the whole searing a steak to like lock in juices. Searing a steak is really just for flavor only. No crust will hold in moisture from a steak. Not true. Doesn't happen. We'll put it on this clean pan and let it go in this low oven. I really like the reverse sear because nothing is happening uh, rapidly. Whereas when you're searing it first, and then finishing it in a hot oven, everything's happening fast. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be comfortable with what you're doing. This is just a solid, sure bet to get a nice, perfectly cooked steak. All right, check this thing out. Let's see what kind of temperature we're gonna get here. 120, that's perfect, that's rare. So after searing the sides in the pan, it should bring us right to about medium rare. We want the pan really hot and we're gonna put just a little bit of oil on the surface of the steak. And you also wanna just like put it in away from you too, especially when you're using oil. We'll do that. A little bit of pressure. That looks good. Oh yeah, look at that. Get this fat side again. So remember this steak is already cooked, just needs the browning. That should be it. Looks pretty good. When I made this first cut, you see these long lines are not what you want. So you wanna go against the grain so you have the shortest fibers possible. 
And you definitely see less of that ring. It's pretty even all the way through. And this is the advantage to doing it this way, where you sear it afterwards. It's medium rare, it looks great. Can you see there's the really thin line of cooking on the edges and even all the way through? I'm pretty happy with this. I think we should taste it. That's my favorite. Wait, one more thing. So maybe we can uh, test another method right now. It's the 4-3-2 the method. So the idea is that it's a really hot dry pan. The first side is gonna be four minutes. The second side is gonna be three. And then you rest it for two and it should be good to go. But that goes against my opinion, which is a ribeye should be a little bit more than medium rare. But hey, let's give this a shot and try it. Okay, so I'm ready to set my timer for four minutes once I put the steak in. Let's see how this goes. Four minutes. It's gonna get smoky in here. <laughs> this, I would definitely not move it when there's no oil. Otherwise, it's just gonna stick and you're gonna like ruin what you started. So you may as well just let it rip. You got about a minute and a half left. All right. Three minutes. Wow. Looks pretty good. Pretty charred. That's okay. I feel like I'm being controlled by a timer. I want to do something, but I can't. Home stretch. No, two minutes. So you think it's going to ooze juice everywhere? I think so. I personally think it needs like 10 minutes or a little less. Two seems a little, not that much for me, but. All right, that's our two. This actually looks really good for me. I think it looks medium. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's medium rare. It looks really good actually. This looks great for a ribeye. You just have to trust the recipe. Recipes are usually there for a reason. Somebody's tested it. This looks to be like a pretty good method. I mean, this got a lot of char. And here that, like these outer edges, that's, you know, that's like medium well, I would say. That char doesn't taste terrible. I feel like if you really love like a char grilled steak out on your grill in the summertime, this is like really close to that. All right, so we have another method here. Everything's gone. We're keeping this one simple, easy, clean. We're just gonna put it in the oven, I guess. <laughs> the only concern I really have with this method is that it's not going to have enough of that Maillard reaction and it's not gonna brown enough. So it will potentially be lacking in some of that caramelized flavor but we'll see. And put just a little butter on it, kind of self-basting while it roasts. Let's take it to the oven. Let's let it rip. All right. Ooh. Curled a lot. Should let it rest for a minute. It's brown, but not as caramelized as like searing it in a pan. All right, let's cut into this. It smells good. Looks pretty nice. I mean, it looks like a nice even doneness. I'm impressed. I mean, that doesn't look bad, right? There's not that cook ring on the edge. It looks even all the way through. It looks medium rare to me. It does not have that deep dark brown crust that we love, but let's see how it tastes. Feels good, feels soft. Hey, good. Still the best one was that reverse sear. But I mean, this one is actually really interesting because 
it almost tastes the most like the meat itself, like the aged beef. It, it tastes really pure. My second favorite, Ooh. next to the uh, reverse sear. I am a little bit. <laughs>